music locations, nbn.com. talk about the code, quote-unquote, and films being pre-code, of course, we're talking about the... Hollywood production code. The Hayes Code. Yes, indeed. Offered which, in 1930 by well, William Well, it was Hayes. kind of put together in 1930 to have rules by which Hollywood producers had to follow. What you could and couldn't say in a movie, it was time for some kind of governing, and they were afraid the government was going to come in and do that. So to try to counterbalance that, they had this production code put together. Right. The Hayes Code talked about infidelity, it talked about sexuality, it talked about nudity. But the thing where the authority of the Hayes Code kind of makes sense was when it had to do with crime and mm -hmm. with criminals. Problem was, nobody followed it for a long time. It had no teeth to it, and nobody was there strong Until enough. Until when? 1934. 34. But what we're concentrating on, of course, are those movies that were made before they put the teeth in the code. Little Caesar, 1931, another take on Al Capone. How do you rate this film? This is the movie that made Robinson a star. Mm -hmm. And you almost see Robinson, and again, maybe I'm superimposing my own kind of sensibilities into this. You almost see Robinson giving the performance of a guy who's saying to himself, this movie's going to make me a star. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do everything in my power. I'm going to steal every angle. I'm going to take my time before I speak. I'm going to force the cut to me, whatever. And now, again, I'm just uh, hypothesizing, and maybe none of what I'm saying is true. But you do see Robinson uh, become a star insofar as uh, he takes a tact and he runs in that direction. No doubt the Rico Bandello character has no doubts. He's going to just mow everybody down in his way. It's this villain that is more evil than sociopathic than sick mm -hmm. and we made that distinction with muni where in scarface there was a there was a clearly a touch of madness in muni's character that that the, that almost engendered some sympathy on your part you could almost as i said earlier see muni in a straitjacket locked, locked up in an asylum for mm -hmm. the rest of his life rather than in prison but uh, uh that's not the case with robinson the rico bandello character is somebody who you, you just realize there's only one fate for this character. There can only one thing can happen to him, which indeed does happen at the end of the film. And up till then, everyone is a foe. Mm -hmm. Everyone is an enemy. Everyone is a problem. There's going to be confrontation. And this is another film like uh, uh, Scarface, and maybe even more so in Little Caesar, where there's a tone of malice. There's a tone of malice that is from the first frame right to the end. Mm -hmm. We also have to say that, you know, in this era, 1931, it was very unusual for somebody like Edward G. Robinson to become a movie star. He didn't have movie star looks. That was an era of, you had very handsome men, the John Barrymores and the, you know, all these other dashing looking fellows. Gable. Gable was coming along at that time. Soon after came Robert Taylor, Jerome Power, and all that. So to have somebody that looked like Edward G. Robinson, who was a very big success on the stage at that point uh, in New York, but that didn't mean anything in the movies. But to come on and make it in the movies like that is quite extraordinary. Edward G. Robinson is a man who becomes a big film star because he was so incredibly talented. Yeah, yeah. and was never less than that. Uh, and he, never, he, never received an Academy Award nomination. He gave, gave, gave incredible performances, wonderful performances again and again yeah. and again in the films. And in this movie, he has one of the great last lines anybody ever we'll gave We'll save that movie. for people when they want to see it. Absolutely. The Let's see the film. Here's the movie based on the novel by W.R. Burnett from Warner Brothers in 1931, Little Caesar. <laughs> 